Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. Today I'm going to tell you about this lovely 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. One cool Tesla has got some cool features and tech. And there's one thing unique about the uh, 2018 long range Model 3 rear wheel drive is actually really, uh, I think it was 2017, 2018 was the only times that Tesla offered a long range version of the rear, uh, a rear wheel drive version of the long range Tesla. Uh, by 2019, if you want to get a long range uh, Model 3, you'd have to get a dual motor one, which is a motor in the front and a motor in the back, making it all wheel drive. This one just has a motor in the back, so it's just rear wheel drive. So going forward, basically if you want a rear wheel drive Tesla, you have to get the shorter range, like standard range, or now they just call it a rear wheel drive. Um, what is unique about the rear wheel drive long range Tesla? Well, at the time, if you're comparing this to about, you know, similar Teslas of 2018, 2019, maybe 2020. Uh, by 2021 and 2022, they actually added a heat pump uh, to uh, the Model 3, which allowed it to go, uh, the all-wheel drive one to go up to a range of 30, 330 miles. But previously, before they added the heat pump on the Model 3 long range dual motor, you had a fully charged range of about 300, 310 miles. The rear wheel drive version of the Model 3 long range actually has a longer range, 320 miles. So it's a little bit more efficient than the all-wheel drive, and that applies today to other EVs. You'll notice that comparable EVs with similar battery sizes uh, versus rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive, you'll realize that the rear-wheel drive ones actually have a little bit longer range. And the reason is, is that, you know, there's weight. Um, weight is an enemy of electric vehicle. Uh, when you have an extra electric motor, that's gonna add weight to the vehicle. And it's also gonna use more energy. The all-wheel drive uh, version of the Tesla Model 3 is faster than the rear-wheel drive, but having two electric motors, those are gonna use a little bit more electricity, especially when you do performance driving versus just one electric motor. So that's the reason why the rear-wheel drive long-range Model 3 is uh, more efficient than a comparable all-wheel drive one. So if you live in the Puget Sound area, or you know areas where you don't get a lot of s snow, you know, they'll do fine with rural drive. It has an excellent traction stability control system. In fact, electric vehicles are able to modulate power a lot more efficiently uh, than uh, gas powered vehicles. So I have a Tesla Model 3 and I notice when my traction control kicks in, I actually don't even realize it's kicking in. It's just, I can see the traction control light uh, pop up on the screen, but uh, usually of gas powered vehicles, you can actually feel the traction control system engage uh, because you know it's e uh, you know modulating power in an electric uh, motor is a lot smoother than modulating power on a gas engine. All right, so let's talk about more what makes this one special. This one has some additional software. This is, has an enhanced autopilot. So enhanced autopilot is somewhere between uh, regular autopilot and full self-driving. So uh, you get a lot of the features. Uh, you get with a full self-driving capability, just not the, you know, the the vehicle is not going to drive itself. I have a Tesla with full self-driving capability. Um, it's in beta right now. You know, it's uh, November of 2022. So if you're watching this in the future on YouTube, uh, things could be different. But right now, as of uh, November 2022, uh, full self-driving is still in beta. So it means that if you're using it, they're monitoring you. So when I have my full self-driving beta on, they're looking at the camera, they can see if I'm not paying attention, if I'm on the cell phone, I can take my beta, I can have my beta privileges taken away and I won't be able to utilize it. So basically I agreed that I'm gonna pay attention and keep my hand in the wheel and be ready to intervene. And the reason why, full self-driving is amazing, but it's still in beta. It can do amazing things that no other cars can do, but still at this point, they're still working out the, the kinks and you know uh, bugs out of the software. So most of the time it does okay, but sometimes it gets confused and you have to intervene. Uh, it's, I equate it to maybe like a, a 13, 14 or 15 year old kid driving the car. You know, they can do the easy stuff, but when you get into complex driving situations, the full self-driving can't handle it. So at this point, if you're not interested in, you know, going all the way to full self-driving and enhanced autopilot gives you a lot of great benefits you don't get with a regular autopilot. Enhanced Autopilot enables your car to navigate highways to your destination, automatically change lanes so you don't get stuck behind slow cars, park in a single touch, and send your car from a parking spaces. Available features may vary uh, you know, based on markets, but most of those features, pretty much all of them, are available, available in our US market. So that's Enhanced Autopilot. Uh, hopefully, you know, I might actually have a chance to, I'd like to compare, do a comparison video, you know, comparing regular Autopilot 
enhanced autopilot and full self-driving and kind of show everyone the differences. So hopefully I have a chance to work on that in the future. But going back to this one, it's a clean Carfax vehicle. In fact, I bought this one for our service manager two years ago. Our service manager um, decided he wanted a Tesla, so I bought him this nice Model 3. It actually came in trade for a brand new Tesla, so I purchased it from Tesla at the auction. Um, it had about 15,000 miles on it. He loved it. He drove it for about two years, and then he actually just traded in for a 2022 Model 3 Performance. Uh, I mean, not Model 3, Model Y. The Model Y is a crossover version of the Model 3. He wants to think a little bit higher up off the ground, more cargo space, and obviously the Performance version uh, is going to be a lot faster than this. This is a great car, but you know, 22 Model Y Performance is a pretty nice upgrade. Uh, but you know, if you're interested in the Model 3, I have a Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is similar to this one. I love my car. I'm, I drive fancy cars all day long uh, in the car business. I've been in the car business 20 years and you know, the Model 3, really I'm, I wouldn't want to drive anything else. It's like an extension of my living space. And a big part of it is this huge infotainment screen. Uh, it's almost like Apple designed this infotainment system. Uh, I have not seen anything close to what Tesla has in any other vehicle I've driven. Now I get to drive lots of nice fancy European luxury cars, Japanese luxury brands, you know, we have a lot of nice cars at Infinity of Tacoma in our used car department, but uh, I have not seen anything that uh, is comparable to this. Then on top of that, <laughs> you have, you know, the Tesla app, which is quite amazing. Uh, a level of connectivity that is, uh, again, something I haven't seen from anywhere else. Right now there's a software update Tesla is constantly doing over their updates. You connect it to your home Wi-Fi and you can uh, update the vehicle and it's constantly gaining features. Uh, when this car came out in 2018, this screen, this display looked completely different and a lot of features has been added to this vehicle uh, since it came out in 2018. So even though this car is getting older, in a lot of ways it's getting better. And uh, you know, even though it's an older Tesla, uh, the infotainment system, the features are similar to what you have like in a brand new 2022 or 2023 Tesla. The processor is a little bit sl slower than what the new ones have, but a lot of the features, the upgrades in the display, they added a blind spot camera. This is a recent update. They decided that they can activate the cameras on the pillars in the side of the vehicle so you have a blind spot camera. Uh, they're constantly adding features. Uh, you know, you have dog mode. So dog mode actually allows you to keep your dog in the vehicle. You activate dog mode and it says on the screen, you know, it's a comfortable 76 degrees. My owner will turn soon. Uh, you have camp mode. Um, what I love in the winter time is uh, I can, uh, right as soon as I get out of the shower, I go and then I go defrost car and that will thaw my car out or if, I, if it's not too cold out, I don't need to defrost. I can just activate the climate control system at whatever temperature I want. I can put the heated seats on. If someone is driving the vehicle, I can uh, see where they are. Um, if I want to make a service appointment, you do it completely through the app. Uh, you can communicate and pay, uh, you know, with the service uh, department through the app. Uh, it's quite amazing. Like I said, it's unlike anything else I've seen from anyone else <laughs> in the automotive world. Great backup camera. Uh, you also have these nice repeater cameras on the pillars, giving you even more visibility. The climate control system is very easy and intuitive to use. Like I said, it's like using an iPad. You can use your hand to uh, activate, uh, you know, change the direction of the airflow. And then some people are like, well, you know, it's kind of a pain to go through the screen to activate the windshield wipers and turn your heated seats on. Well, you don't need to do that. Tesla has 140 or so different voice commands and you can go here in the steering wheel, put wipers on, puts the wipers on. Put heated seats on. It puts my heated seats on. Make it warmer. Every time I say make it warmer, it will keep on raising the temperature by three degrees. So you can keep on, you know, doing that, and it'll, you know, raise the temperature by three degrees. Uh, it'll keep on going until you're happy temperature. Or I can be like, make it cooler, and it will lower the temperature by three degrees. Pretty cool stuff. All right, I have a tendency to ramble on on these videos, but man, there's so much to talk about. Another important aspect uh, of the Model 3, um, and one reason why I decided to buy one, is that uh, it's the safest vehicle ever tested by the NHTSA. Lowest probability of injury in a motor uh, vehicle accident out of any other vehicle in the world. Um, 
So yeah, interior space is pretty good for a compact vehicle. You have a completely flat floor. But I have a you know two-year-old and five-year-old, so uh, you know, and obviously if I'm tra traveling with my family, uh, you know, I want to be in the safest car as possible. So that gives me a little peace of mind, and it's not just the way the vehicle is constructed that makes it safe. Uh, the autopilot and uh, enhanced autopilot software make it safe. Right now, a vehicle operating on autopilot is averaging one accident for every, about every four million miles driven. Um, you know, versus a human, a human is averages, uh, I think right now, a human's about one accident for every 500,000 miles driven. Obviously, we're very smart people. Uh, you know, we're a lot smarter than a computer. But the one thing about this car is it has cameras all around it and it never gets distracted. It never is looking at it, text messages on its phone. It's not looking out the window. Uh, it never gets distracted. It's always paying attention. So there's two, uh, you know, levels of safety. There's the uh, the layer of safety with the vehicle and obviously you uh, paying attention is also an additional level of safety and uh, I like to uh, make the equivalence of that you know you're kind of like the supervisor and the car is the worker so when you have it on autopilot the car is steering uh, in its own lane it's moving with the flow of traffic it's doing the work for you and you're supervising and uh, you know people will say well you know I, I really would just prefer not to have to do that at all but I can tell you I've driven you know, lots and lots of miles on Tesla's and autopilot, and I hate driving on the highway. I hate driving at night in rainy weather. Uh, it takes a lot of mental, it takes a lot of mental capacity even just to keep your, lane, your car centered in the highway, uh, you know, at 60, 70 miles an hour. So just for the car to take that workload off of you, I can't tell you how much of a difference it makes. And then I hate driving and stop and go traffic. Rainy days, nasty rainy days and stop and go traffic which can go on for you know an hour or so or longer it makes your life a lot easier when the car is doing the creeping along in traffic and you're just sitting there supervising enjoying the music you have a great infotainment system man i can go on and on <laughs> well thank you so much for taking the time today to watch this video and i also like to add uh, i don't know if it's going to be the case in the future but right now if you do have an enhanced autopilot and you do want to upgrade to the full self-driving, uh, Tesla generally gives people a discounted uh, upgrade price uh, for the full self-driving if they already have the enhanced autopilot. So that's also something to think about too with this vehicle. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day.